In today's video, we are going to talk about Pop OS vs Zorin OS, which is the best modern Linux distro. Myself, Muhammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Linux is a great platform that offers great compatibility and advanced features by which developers can perform various number of tasks. However, it always becomes confusing to choose a single Linux operating system other than something else. Pop OS and Zorin are two of the very prominent and modern Linux distributions. Let's see what do they have for us. First of all, let's talk about Pop OS. Well, Pop OS is one of the Linux operating system that is based on Ubuntu and it is developed by American Linux computer manufacturer System76. This Linux distro is filled with a custom genome desktop by default and it is available as an open source operating system. Just like its previous version, now we have 21.10. Now let's talk about some of the features that this Linux distributions offer. Well, first of all, if I talk about the user interface, the user interface is very clean and very beautiful. At the bottom, we have a taskbar and in here we have different icons for different application and we have application launcher button. At the top bar, we have some widgets like we can control our volume, we can have our power option and we have our desktop windows. Other than that, you have another icon and that shows some of the shortcuts and some of the settings that you can perform and you can access some of the features of your Pop OS. And then on the left side of your top bar, you have your workspaces. At the moment, I have two by default. As soon as you start adding your workspaces, you will get to see more of them. Then you have your applications that are open at the moment. Now let's talk about the default applications. Well, Pop OS offers very prominent and very important default applications. For example, in terms of web browser, we get Mozilla Firefox by default. Then we have text editor, we have a weather application, and we have some more things. In terms of office, we have a whole family of LibreOffice that comes as a default. Then we have some of the system utilities and tools like disk management, language support, system monitor, and power statistics. In terms of utilities, we get these number of utilities that come by default. So you can set them and you can also put them at the taskbar at bottom of your Pop OS. Other than that, you can also create your new folders at the desktop. So that is a very clean and very beautiful and simple and easy to learn interface even if you are a beginner. Now let's see what do we have in terms of desktop wallpapers. For that purpose, right click on your screen, go to your change background. From here, you have different number of backgrounds that you can choose for your desktop. So that's a very good thing that Pop OS offers you versatility in terms of having different wallpapers. Now let's talk about the gaming support because Pop OS comes with two version. In one version, you have AMD support and the other version comes with the NVIDIA support by default. So if you have a GPU or graphic card of NVIDIA, you should download the Pop OS with NVIDIA version and it will have the support by default. Not only that, Steam also come by default in Pop OS. So you can download and install Steam. As you can see in the Pop Shop, we have Steam by default on the first page and you can download it and all the games that are supported for Linux distributions with Steam will be available in your Pop OS. So we can say that Pop OS is completely suitable for gaming purpose as well. Now, as Pop OS is based on Ubuntu, we have a great support available because Ubuntu has a great and huge community. Not only that, Pop OS users are also in very large number. So you will get the support for your problem very immediately. Now let's talk about the resource usage of Pop OS. So for that, I'll use a utility called as Top. Here at the moment, my Pop OS is using almost 1100 megabytes of my RAM. That is not very high, but if we compare it with some other Linux distribution, it is a bit higher. But again, if you have a system with sufficient hardware resources, 
then you should not worry about and now let's talk about some of the system information so for that again i'll use a utility called as neofetch so i will just write here neofetch enter and here we have all the information related to system for example in terms of kernel we are using 5.15 version then we have shell version which is bash 5.18 then we have the desktop environment which is obviously genome but the version is 40.5 then we have some other information related to this system at the end i will talk about the hardware requirements that are needed to use this linux distribution well you should have 2 gigabytes of ram at least and 16 gigabyte of storage and a 64 bit compatible processor 4 gigabytes of ram is recommended for smooth use and that was all about the pop os now i'll shift towards the zorin os and then we'll see what do we have there so this is how zorin os looks like well zorin os is a great linux operating system for those who are switching from windows to linux and it is also based on ubuntu this linux distro is designed and developed by an open source community and it was designed to provide a faster and powerful experience on a mid-end hardware machine. Zorin OS works to provide a better security and privacy options as it is based on Ubuntu. So let's see what do we have in terms of Zorin OS. First of all, I'll talk about the user interface. As you can see, the user interface is very simple and very easy to understand. Maybe it is inspired by the Windows 7 interface as you can see. We have all the applications and launcher button docked on the left side of our taskbar and then we have some of the controls on the right side of our taskbar. Here we have our date and if you click on it, you will have your notifications here as well. Other than that, you have some other controls in here and the thing that makes Zorin OS very prominent is we have an application that says Zorin Appearance. Here it is. This application allows you to do a lot of customization in terms of the user interface and theme of your Zorin OS. We have some of the layouts that we can try. For example, the first one having icons of your application. The second one will have tabs. The third one is like the genome one as you have seen in Pop OS. And in the fourth one, we get the layout just like the Ubuntu. Then if you go with the Zorin OS paid one, you get some more options but I'll not talk about that. Then you have some of the themes, interface, desktop, fonts that you can change and you can customize for your Zorin OS with Zorin Appearance application. Other than that, if we talk about the default application, here we have all the applications that are available. For example, in terms of accessories, we have files, maps, text editor, and so on. Then we have some of the games that comes as pre-installed. Then you have some internet, and for internet, we have Mozilla Firefox as a default web browser. Just like Pop OS, we have LibreOffice in here as well by default for your documentation. And then you have some of the application for your sounds and videos, system tools, and you have some utilities as well like calculator, archive manager, document viewer, and many more. Now let's see what type of desktop wallpapers are available with Zorin OS. So here, we get some of the desktop wallpaper by default, just like the Pop OS. So I would say that both of these Linux distributions are even in terms of the desktop wallpapers. Now let's talk about a very important thing and that is gaming support. Just like Pop OS, Zorin OS also supports gaming. You can download and install Steam and again, all the games that are supported for Linux distributions on Steam, you can enjoy them on your Zorin OS as well. So again, in terms of gaming, Pop OS and Zorin OS are both even, but there is slight difference. In Pop OS, we have a version that comes with NVIDIA support, but that is not the case with Zorin OS. As Zorin OS is also based on Ubuntu, we have a great community for Zorin OS as well. So all those things that you can perform on any Ubuntu-based Linux distribution, you can do that on your Zorin OS as well. And again, if you get into any problem, you can apply the solution of any Ubuntu Linux distribution, I mean mostly onto your Zorin OS as well. So that shows that we have a great pack in terms of the community support when it comes to Zorin OS. Now let's talk about the resource usages of Zorin OS. So for that again, I'll open the terminal and in terminal, I'll again use the utility called as top. So here, 
My Zorin OS is using almost 1300 megabytes of my RAM and if we compare it with the Pop OS, it is almost 200 megabytes more. So it shows that Zorin OS is not as lightweight in terms of hardware resource usage as any other Linux distribution. But if we compare it with Pop OS, obviously it is using a bit more resources. Now let's talk about the system information and again for that we have to use a utility called as NeoFetch. So I will just write here NeoFetch and let's see what do we have. Well in terms of kernel it is using 5.11. On the other hand in Pop OS it was using 5.15 and for shell version it is using bash 5.0.17 and again desktop environment is genome but Zorin OS comes with XFCE as well. So it is all up to you that which desktop environment you want to choose. Just go to the official website and download the ISO file with the needed desktop environment. At the end, if we talk about the resources that are required to install this Linux distribution, well, you should have at least 2 GB of RAM and 15 GB of hard drive space to install this Linux distribution. But obviously, 4 GB is a recommended one to have smooth experience of this beautiful Linux distribution. And that was all about the Zorin OS. Now, which is the best modern Linux distro? Well, I would say Zorin is the better one because if you are a beginner, you will feel at home because it is more like the Windows layout. Other than that, you can also perform a lot of customization and majority of the tasks can be done by the user interface. On the other hand, Pop OS is also a simple Linux distribution, but if you are a beginner and you are going to use the Linux distribution for the first time, you might have to spend a little bit of time in learning how to use that particular Linux distribution. Other than that, we have more customization option in Zorin. It is more beautiful, but yes, it is using a bit more hardware resources as compared to Pop OS. But Pop OS has one advantage we get NVIDIA supported version of that Linux distribution. Other than that, I would say Zorin OS is a clear winner. And with that, we are done with today's video. So please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. We'll get back to you in the next video. Till then, take care.